Let me check my list, make sure I got all the things anywhere you want to in the dark. Ish, dark, yeah. And like prop up the book and then it has like little things that piece over the book. I'm not describing this right. I'm like, where can I find a book to show you how it works? <laughs> well, this is just a cover, dang. But I think notebooks of any kind are sort of a writer's dream. Did I say writers? Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse. I pulled together a whole bunch of stuff, as you can tell by the title of this video, for a bit of a bookish gift guide. So this is for the bookish person in your life, even if that bookish person is yourself, but I pulled together a whole bunch of things that I love when I think about the other bookish people in my world, gifts that would be great for them, and also something I have my eye on, maybe just one thing I have my eye on, like other than the obvious <laughs> giant list of books. But I am already getting so many sale emails and all those same warnings that we had last year about shopping early because shipping is gonna be delayed again. So I'm all for taking advantage of a deal. I am all for getting some cool stuff for cool people in my world. And like I said, I thought I would just share some ideas in case you were looking for some inspiration for what to buy this holiday season. So I don't wanna ignore the obvious, which is buying bookish people books that they want or maybe buying them gift cards so they can purchase some books that they want and that's totally easy stuff and with the ability to be able to do like amazon wish lists or basically just ask someone what they're looking for no bookish person is going to be disappointed if you buy them a book or a gift card to go buy a book for themselves but I thought we would look sort of beyond that and come up with some other ideas. So most readers I know like to track the books that they're reading. And a lot of us do it on Goodreads, but a lot of us also keep our own manual book tracker at home. And there's a couple different ways to do this. So there are custom made book journals for people. So this is one that I have, and this was actually gifted to me. And I am so embarrassed to say I haven't used it yet. And it has places where you can write the book title and all of your thoughts about it, when you read it, where you read it. You can rate it, notes and opinions, overall rating. And I don't know if anybody does this. Do you save things because you're like, oh, it's super special and I don't know where to start. So I don't want to use it just yet. I want to like wait for that special moment. I am going to not save this and I'm gonna start using this. So I love this because it does have all those prompts in it and it has, I'm not a bullet journaler, which we'll talk about in a minute, but this has like all the details you need and it gives you all the prompts to fill it out. So this is a great little book and there are different versions of this. So I was browsing in Barnes and Noble this weekend, just trying to get some inspiration for some people in my life and a little inspiration for myself. And I saw a couple of different versions of book journals in there. So if you just Google a book journal, I'll link this one if I can find it. And I just think it's such a great gift. And then in the back of it, like this has a list of great books to read and some recommendations. It has memorable book and author events. It has an area for you to put your favorite authors. There's some quotes in here. There's a section for you to list books that you've given out to people, books you've borrowed, and you can include like your library books that you've borrowed in here. And then there's like a bookish reading wish list, so you can put books you want to read. So such a great little book and I can't believe I haven't used it yet so I'm gonna get cracking on using this but this is a great one but like I said if maybe you have a bullet journaler in your life or someone who likes to sort of create their own I also for years so this is a moleskin journal so I've been using this and it's just a plain lined journal and you can sort of do with it what you want I'm not a bullet journaler but I sort of tried to be a little bit <laughs> it didn't go so well but what I like about this, and you can sort of make it whatever you want. So this is sort of an example. So I was listing, there was a time where I was listing the books I read, and then I was tracking how many pages I was reading per day. I kind of got away from that this year, partially because it just became more than I could keep up with, slash wanted to keep up with, so I just sort of started listing the books. But what's great about a journal like this is, like I said, you can make it whatever you want it to be. So I've listed like the A to Z challenge. I feel like this is getting super whited out so you can't see it. But I've also printed out 
the, like the pop sugar challenge that I was working on and taped that in here. So you can kind of make this whatever you want it to be. So kind of any line journal is great for this and you can take notes on your books. So I think long story short, journals and notebooks of any kind are always a good hit for book lovers. And I am also like a huge fan of the spiral notebook because I love being able to, you know, turn the book this way and that and have more flexibility. So this is from a store called Appointed. So I will link their website down below. They make beautiful, beautiful notebooks. They have a very curated collection, but you can also find pens and calendars. My daily planner is from there. They have some really beautiful things. I think notebooks are always a great hit for readers because we're always writing down what we want to read. Not everybody does it digitally. I am not a great digital person. So yes, I love having email on my phone and doing all those things and Instagram, but like I don't use the calendar on my phone for personal life. I use it for work because that's work, but I am someone who still likes to write stuff down. So give me a notebook any day. Although don't give me a notebook because I have like 50 of them that I haven't used yet, but I think notebooks are always a great idea. And then staying on the notebook train, you have to have pens. So I am a pen junkie. I'm not even gonna pretend that this is the only pen cup that I have. It's not. I love me so many different kinds of pens. I like to write in different colors. I like to take notes in different colors. I did, like I said, kind of fancy myself trying to be a bullet journaler at one point. It didn't hold. But you guys know that I am someone who dog ears. I am someone who writes in books. So I think having like a good pencil if you want to underline in books. So these are Prismacolor pencils and they're nice and smooth and they <laughs> underline beautifully for those of you who like to underline in your books as well. And I just absolutely love them. So I think any kind of pen writing tool is always great. And then if you do have someone who's way fancier than I am, who does do bullet journaling, pens are always a good idea because you're always sort of writing. And I think like some of these like super fine pilot pens are great, which I was using when I was making the charts and stuff in my book. So they're super fine point. And then you can kind of get like a bullet journaling kit. And I'm sure you can find these out there and any kind of straight edge, so that you can make lines in your books. And then if you start in pencil, which is what I was doing, and then you want to color over it with your fine point pen, and then maybe you need an eraser because you've got to erase any pencil that's left over. And then maybe you need a little brush to brush away all of your crumbs from said eraser so you can have like a nice clean canvas to work with. So I think any kind of tools for bullet journalers are always great as well so people can make their reading journals or their booktube plans or whatever it is they use their notebooks for. There's so many creative ways that people can organize theirs. I'm not the most creative in the world, but I do like to have options and I do like to have lots of pens and colors with things. So these are always great fun. And then also maybe you have someone who is more of a pencil person than a pen person. So behold the color pencil kit because I love to use the color pencils in my notebook. I also have one of those stress-free coloring books, which I probably should be using more of because there's just uh, never not a good day. There's always a good day to use the stress-free coloring book. I'm not making any sense, but color pencils are great. You can always find these on great deals. I got this on Amazon. It might have, I don't even remember what the sale was, but I got this for not a lot of money. It's 60 different colors. Some of them are pulled out, but there's all sorts of different brands of colored pencils and all sorts of things. Prismacolor is great. I don't know if I mentioned this. I used to work at an architecture firm, not as an architect, but you really get turned on to a certain level of pen and pencil and marker when you work with architects. So Prismacolors are great, but this is their scholar collection. So they have different degrees and levels of pencils as well, but beautiful collection of pencils. So highly recommend those. And then if your bookish person is not necessarily a, I underline a dog ear. If they're more of a, I like to tab and annotate and they're way more put together than I am, you can always get, I just have like these two little post-it things. You can always get little tabs for annotating books and hook your person up with that. Because if they, like I said, don't want to deface their books, but want to mark up their books, it's a great way to do it. And when you're reading a book, you of course need bookmarks for your books. So I do dog ear, but I still use a bookmark because my dog earring is for 
passages and quotes and lines and words and things that I want to go back to, my bookmark is so I know what page I'm on. So recently I shared on my Instagram that I picked up, this is two of the five because the others are in circulation, from Hey Atlas Creative. This is the Riley Sager set. So there's one bookmark for each book and they each have a quote from one of the books on it. They are dual sided. They are beautifully made. And then I also picked up another set. I wanna say it was either like the fall collection or like the Halloween one. So this one has a quote from Stephen King on it, from It, and it says, she laughed at the stars, frightened but free, her terror as sharp as pain and as sweet and ripe as an apple. And again, it's two-sided, super cool. There was one from Hocus Pocus and there was a third one. So this is a three pack set. And then I also have, I mean, it's like you can do like any kind of bookmark. So this is one of my favorites. I got this years ago at Brookline Booksmith, <laughs> for those of you in Boston who remember that, and, or in Brookline, but like it just like slips right over the page. So I, there's so many different kinds of bookmarks you guys can get out there. And then also what I got from Hey Atlas Creative, but you can also get from lots of places too, any kind of like little bookish sticker. So this one says, books may well be the only true magic. This also came in a pin, which was sold out, but I feel like bookish pins, stickers, any of that kind of stuff is always great. So whether you wanna decorate your notebook, or you want to, you know, put the pin on your jacket or your bag. There's always great bookish stuff out there and accessories. So those are always fun to have. And then another must have, every reader I know is either a tea drinker or a coffee drinker or a little bit of both. And I am both. And I have so many mugs. It's obnoxious but you always need a mug, right? But one that I've shown you guys many times before, this is my Murder by the Book mug. So this one is the Holmes and Watson Marple and Poirot. There's a Nancy Drew one. There's just, I wanna say like a straight up Murder by the Book one, but I have a few of these, which I love. I have just so many different mugs that I've collected over the years, and a lot of them are sentimental. Like I would pick up the same way I would kind of pick up like a keychain or a magnet if I went on a trip somewhere and try to have something sentimental, but I am always, using a mug always always need something to drink out of and then you could also like if you know what their tea or coffee preferences you could also buy them like the mug and maybe some tea so one of my favorites that i've talked about but many times before this is hot cinnamon spice by harney and sons this is so good you guys this is like insanely amazing tea i love it so much and then another one i'm loving lately this is egyptian licorice mint by yogi this is caffeine free so you can drink it all day all night whenever you want it this has got a great taste to it also but i am like a tea junkie so i always think that that's kind of fun like you could do like a little bit of a set for somebody and why not and maybe like throw in some chocolate or something like that because not that you have to be a reader to like any kind of like treat or something, but you could do sort of like a, like a little treat package. Why not? So also along the lines of like setting the mood, candles. <laughs> Who doesn't love a candle? Ah, there's so many like seasonal candles and I feel like Bath and Body Works always does a big sale. So you can get like these three wick candles and you can usually get a deal. So you just sort of have to like search, but I feel like they usually do it like around Black Friday, but honestly, any place you can get a candle. And there's so many, whether they're scented or unscented, if you want just sort of like a festive look to it, this one's all glittery and sparkly. This is old, unfortunately this one's not available anymore, but I just hit myself in the nose. It smells like snow, so good. But anything kind of glittery, gold, silver, festive that kind of a thing is always fun and then i am a sucker for the seasonal candle so i have this is the pumpkin chai one from nest i've had this for years it is finally at the end of its rope this one smells so good but i bought this i was still working in the city when i bought this so this was easily 20, this might even have been 2018 that I bought this because I was working in the city at the job before the job I have now. I do pull this out for the certain season, so that's why it's lasted, but this thing is like, this is the gift that keeps on giving. And then I also bought, more recently, this is the Wild Mint and Eucalyptus. So this is the minier one. Also smells delicious, but any kind of candle, scented or unscented, like I said, that looks, feels like holiday-ish, or just a favorite scent, so you can burn it all year round, it doesn't have to be a holiday one, always a win for setting the mood. And then of course you need to protect your books. So if you're taking your books on the go, 
a book sleeve is always a good idea. So my fabulous friend Lindsay from Lindsay's Little Library makes these book sleeves. I will link her site down below on Etsy. So she makes two different sizes, hardcovers, paperbacks. I also use this for my iPad if I'm going somewhere with that because I I don't have a Kindle or anything. I read all my eBooks on my iPad and I have a Kindle app so I can read those as well. So this is also a great iPad book sleeve. It doubles as, but for a book perspective, I'm like, where can I find a book to show you how it works? <laughs> so, oh, see? Here's that other bookmark I was talking about. So this is from Shirley Jackson, The Haunting of Hill House. This came with the ones that I was talking about. This one said, am I walking towards something I should be running away from? So I did not just randomly pull this out of a page I was on. I was debating picking up this Dennis Lehane book next, which is why the cover's already off. But just to show you guys. So it fits in here and it's super secure and it won't get all dinged up in your bag and you're good to go. And then when you get to wherever you are, train, whatever you're doing, pull out your book. Book is safe and it looks cool at the same time. So she does have some holiday options. She's got some year round options. She's always coming out with new book sleeves, but definitely check out Lindsay's shop. And these are amazing. So like I said, I use my iPad for reading my eBooks. I do have the Kindle app so I can download books for Kindle as well. And I can read NetGalley books on there. And then I do all my library apps are also on my iPad as well as on my phone. So I can listen to my audio books from my library or my downloaded books from my library. I do it all on my iPad. So you could certainly buy someone an iPad if that's what you wanna do, go for it. I don't have an e-reader so I can't speak to the paper white or the other things. I don't even know what they're all called, but I know people who have them and love them. So maybe that's an option. And then also, and again, depending on what you want to do, I use my iPad, my iPods for listening to books all the time. So if you wanted to get something a little bit pricier slash a lot pricier than a mug, iPods, AirPods, any kind of headphones for the person in your world. So if they are someone who listens to a lot of audiobooks, that's a great gift. These are the original ones. These are not anything, these are the least fancy of the whole bunch. And I know Apple doesn't really do sales, but they usually have some kind of promotion over Black Friday weekend. So whether it's like you buy something and you get a gift card or you buy something and maybe you get like free Apple TV or something. I always check it out just to see what it is, but it usually applies to things like the AirPods or Apple TV or something like that. So I've had these for years. I have no plans of getting new ones, but I use these every day and they are amazing. So another great thing is always any kind of bookish apparel or tote. So whether it's t-shirts or sweatshirts, like you can always find something with like a clever saying on it. And then I think any kind of reusable tote bag. So again, there's so many out there that have either bookish quotes and you can use it for the supermarket. You can use it to carry your books around. You can use it as a bag going to and from work, whatever. Who can't use a reusable tote? I am constantly using mine and there's so many cute ones out there and I feel like it takes all of my self-control like not to keep buying more of them. But anything with some sort of bookish quote, line, picture, whatever it is on it is always a cute idea. And same with any kind of t-shirts and things like that. So bookish apparel, I feel like is always welcome. And then something that I got a lot of questions on after a vlog I posted last month, I want to say, is my book weight. So this looks really kind of weird. Let me get back to my Dennis Lehane book here. So it is literally meant to hold open your book. I'll put a better thing in here. So if you're sitting reading, you're sitting eating, whatever it is, it's hands free. So you can just use your book weight to hold your book open for you. And I love it because it's just easy to move around. It's easy to adjust. They have these little desks kind of book. I don't know even what you call them, but this is sort of something that's on my radar that I haven't found yet. So a lot of people asked, cause I had it propped up in the video, how I had my book set up. So it was actually just stacked on a couple of other books, which is not the best way to be doing it, but I need my book to have like a little bit of a prop to it, not just sitting flat when I'm reading it if I'm eating or something. So they have ones where you can prop up the book and it has like little clips that you can put over to hold it open. But every time you wanna turn the page, you have to like take the clips off and then turn it and then like put the clips back on again. I don't have time for that. So this is brilliant because it just sits 
and drops on the floor when you're trying to hold your book up. <laughs> but if you're not holding your book up to show it in a video, it stays put and it's great. So I love this thing. I bought this a couple years ago. I think it was like 20 bucks. It is probably one of the best investments I have ever made for my bookish life. And then I would say my second best bookish purchase that I have made that has been a game changer is my book light. Ah, this thing is amazing. So I was reading in bed at six o'clock this morning because I couldn't sleep. It's Sunday. Nobody wants to be up at 6 a.m. on a Sunday, or at least I don't. <laughs> and I was in the dark with my book light reading. So this is from Lu Lumino Light and it has three different settings. It has like three different colors and then three different degrees of brightness. It's everything. It's bendable. It game changes everything. Not a huge investment price wise. So it's rechargeable. It comes with a USB. You just plug it in, you charge it up, you're good to go. And I use this thing also probably almost every day because I read before I go to bed. 95% of the time, I would say. If I'm like shattered, I won't, if I just like can't even keep my eyes open. But other than that, I am pretty much always reading, even if it's only for like 10 minutes before I go to sleep. And I'm always using the book light and it's game changing. How many times can I say game changing? And then the last thing I'm gonna recommend, and I was very late in the game getting this, but I finally did. Can you guys see my book cart? Hallelujah. Pay no attention to the bag in the background, but there's a bag in the background. Um, I don't know what took me so long getting this thing or deciding I needed this. I think I was kind of like, oh no, I will keep all of my books on a shelf and I don't need a cart. So I got a cart. <laughs> I filled it up completely it's not good um but it's great and it's perfect and i love it so there's multiple places that you can get a book card at and i would highly recommend it so i need to organize it better right now it just sort of has my books and like just empty covers on it for things that i have pulled out to read things i have pulled out to read but i absolutely love it it's beautiful and I, I totally get it. I totally get the hype. I totally get why people have book carts. I totally understand the excitement behind it. So I'm a thousand percent gonna put my books or magic sticker on there and I need to adorn it with some more stickers and things like that. And I need, like I said, I need to organize it and I need to organize my shelves. Um, I guess if you were really feeling crazy, you could buy a bookish person a bookshelf, but that's maybe a little bit a little bit extra. So anyway, let me push you guys back because we're a little bit close. So uh, I feel like those are all the things. It's everything that's on my list. I didn't want to forget anything. See, I told you I write stuff down. Not good with the not good with the digital. Not good with the digital. So that's gonna do it for some bookish gift ideas for you or for the bookish people in your life. But let me know because I'm sure I have missed so many things. Like, what are your favorite book bookish accessory? What are your favorite gifts to give or get as a bookish person? Let me know because obviously I am gonna need to buy myself something for the holidays as well. So if you know of anything, and especially if you know of any kind of like lap desk, something where I can prop the book up on. So like I said, I started to do a little bit of research on that, but everything I was finding was kind of holding it almost like at a 90 degree angle or maybe like a 75 degree angle, which is just like, Feel like it's too aggressive for me and I also didn't see like a lot of strong reviews so I didn't go too deep on that dive but I need to and I just want something where I can just lay it like I don't want the clips I don't want anything complicated I don't want anything like super expensive like I saw some ones that were sort of like in that $20 accessory range and there were like some bamboo ones I saw quickly on Amazon and things like that but I'm looking for something I don't want a lap desk I don't want that cushion thing that props up the book like I'm hyper specific about what I want, but I haven't found what I want yet. But I need something so that I'm not constantly grabbing other books to prop my book up on so I can read it. So like if I'm sitting in a chair, I'll put a uh, cushion on my lap and that's totally fine. But at the table, I definitely need something else. So anyway, if anybody knows of any kind of good book propping situation, <laughs> let me know. And if you know of any good sales and you want to share them with the whole group, definitely do that too. So 
I hope this was helpful. I hope you guys found a little something in here that is either, like I said, appealing for you or helpful for someone in your life. But if I think of other things, I'll let you know. And thank you guys so much for watching. So happy shopping, happy holiday weekend. Like I said, I am posting this um, right before Black Friday. So for those in the US who are celebrating Thanksgiving, I hope you guys have a great holiday and everyone is staying safe and enjoying it with friends and family and loved ones. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'm so grateful for all of you. And I didn't mean for that to be as cheesy as it sounded since it's Thanksgiving, but I am. So take care everybody and I will see you soon in another video. Bye everybody.